Jen Dalton, we met her at the Diabetes Expo. And she has a background in, um, as an occupational therapist. She's been a certified urban polling instructor now for a couple of years. She's currently working towards her own fitness instructor and pre- and postnatal coaching certifications. She's recently moved with her husband and her two children from Vancouver to Calgary. She enjoys skiing, running, reading, spending time with her family, and of course, urban polling. So as um, you heard, I'm Jen. I am an instructor for urban polling. I recently moved here from Vancouver. Excuse me, is the microphone on? Oh, Linda. There's no I'll just talk. I'll talk really loud. Oh. Uh, I have just moved to Calgary. We're just getting started establishing some urban polling in Calgary. I do see people with polls around, but it's still a fairly new activity. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview. I'll show you my slides. I've got polls that we can demo afterwards. Um, it's fairly e easygoing presentation. If you have a question, don't hesitate to put up your hand or yell or let me know because it's sort of more of a conversation. I don't want it to be too formal. So don't hesitate to stop me. And I have some polls for trying and yeah, we'll have some fun. Four-wheel drive for humans. Yeah, four-wheel drive for humans. That's oh, right. Yeah. You were paying attention at the diabetes expo. <laughs> so just briefly, make sure I'm not missing out anything. This presentation, we'll just go through some of the benefits, it'll show you some pictures of the poles, we'll go over the equipment, there will be tips for winter walking, which in Calgary winter seems to go on forever, <laughs> and then we'll do a test drive, okay? Okay, <coughs> so in order, we call it urban polling, the company is from Vancouver, the poles are developed by an occupational therapy and therapist in BC, uh, she's designed these poles. They, they are, she calls them urban poles, so I say urban polling, but in fact it's also called Nordic walking, which you might have heard of, or just pole walking. They're, they're, all, this, they're all synonymous, they're, they all mean the same thing. And um, in Alberta, cross-country skiing is a big thing, so this is very similar to cross-country skiing, but you're walking, it's, it's the same idea. The poles just add a little bit extra give a little boost to your workout. Uh, <coughs> Four-wheel drive, as Tom said. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little bit of extra traction. You'll find that you're standing up straighter. I like using my poles this time of year when the sidewalks are still a little bit slippery because it just gives me two more points of contact on the ground. It also, when you have two poles in your hands, I find you stand up straighter, you are more balanced, you're, you're not leaning over on one side, you're not stooped over a walker, you, it just promotes a good body stance. And I don't know, my husband think that, thinks that looks like Brad Pitt. I don't know if it is, but he's definitely <laughs> leaning over on his cane. <laughs> so here you can see good posture versus not so good posture. Now most people, when you're getting, if you are prescribed a walker or a cane by your doctor or your therapist, you would have been fitted professionally for it. So I know for the most part you should be using them appropriately, but everybody has the habit. I even find myself when I'm sitting or driving or walking, it's very easy just to punch over, especially if you're using a walker. So the poles, you, it's almost impossible. You have to stand up straight when you're holding them because they hold your arms up and you, you're just, I find I'm more aware of where I'm standing and how I'm walking when I'm using my poles. All right, although people are usually fitted properly. Um, yeah, okay, another point. When you're leaning over your walker or cane, your abdominals are, are slack and they're relaxed. When you're using your poles and you're pushing with your arms, you're contracting your abs every single step. So that helps with your whole core. You're working your back muscles and you're working your core muscles. And so it's not just about your arms and your legs. You're actually including your whole body, which just strengthens your core, which improves posture and overall well-being. So if you look at this, if you see the 
Names the muscles in blue. Those are the muscles that you work when you're walking just without poles. If you add poles by pushing on your poles, using your arms, all of a sudden you go from using just half of your body's muscles, you go up to 90%. And I've heard instructors saying if you're talking, you even add more. Most people, when they're walking, they're talking. <laughs> so it, you can see that you go from just using your lower extremities, you include all of a sudden your abs, your back, all up to your arms and your shoulders. I really feel it in my triceps, but even if I haven't been out with my poles for a while, I can feel it in my shoulders. I can tell it, oh, I haven't been working it out right, so I can, it helps me strengthen that part of my body. Like, why wouldn't you want to walk with poles when you look at that? Walking's good. Just add poles, that's what they say. Okay, so by adding the poles, in addition to being more stable on your feet and in all the other things I've mentioned about the posture, you're also burning more calories. Every time you work your muscles, you're, you're burning calories. So by working more muscles, you're burning more calories. It improves your metabolic rate, it helps burn um, fat if you're interested in that. It de-stresses the lower body joints, especially if you use the technique that I'm going to show you today where you have the poles out front. Some of these people, there's two techniques and I'll show you. One is more for fitness and you have your poles behind you. If you have the poles out in front, they take a lot of weight off of your joints, which I think would be really beneficial for your population. And it helps you have a normal gait pattern because you get into a bit of a rhythm. So if you're someone who limps or you're someone who's like, leans over or you don't have a clear gait, if you have your poles, it just evens it out a little bit, makes it easier because you get into a bit of a rhythm. I often have like a little bit of a marching tune in my head and we just go like, hey, wait, wait, no. Rhythm is good. Yeah. Um, right. So the research shows that you burn 20% more calories by adding the poles than if you're walking without them. And that's not just like for weight management, but it's just for overall health and well-being. Research. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this because I can send this information to you, but there's a ton of research and there is a lot on the website too if anyone's interested in, in the benefits of Nordic walking.
But in my experience, most doctors and therapists really support the poles, so as long as there isn't a danger to you using them, I, don't, I can't imagine why they wouldn't say, okay. Why do they say walkers and cane users when if you, you want them to progress to the poles, don't you? Um, I think I, I wouldn't, if you were um, really a long time walker or cane user, you would might want to get a recommendation from somebody because um, there might be spine problems, there might be muscle imbalances. But it might be as simple as just more training required. Yeah. I mean, it's not so you can't use the poles for these training. conditions, but you might need more training. So, so further assessments, you might want to try the poles out for the first time. So if you're someone who cannot walk without a cane, then you wouldn't want to, I wouldn't just give you poles and say, off you go, like you would need to have some training. <laughs> Fear of falling. All right. So, some of what, for someone who's had a fall, um, sometimes it's a tough to get back out walking outside and even sidewalks, the whole thing. So, the, as a therapist, what we want to do is just safely get people back to outdoor activity. Poles are a great way to do that, but again, you would want to go with someone, have someone with you, and not by yourself. If you were someone who needed a little bit of extra support, or if there was a danger that you might um, be at high risk to fall, then you, a therapist, anyone, I wouldn't be able to sort of give you the poles without double checking that you were going to be safe. With it. I, but. As it says there, pole walking can give people confidence. So once you get used to your poles, you're going to find that you have so much better balance. You're feeling secure. It's like you've got four-wheel drives. You're on fours, and you'll feel a lot stronger. There's a question in the back. Yep. Can you use them interchangeably with your cane? I believe you can. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Would, would, would there be a benefit? Is there any difference between going for a walk with your cane? If you're just using one pole, it might be a posture benefit because your pole is higher than the cane. Yeah. It would depend on how high you have your cane exposed. <coughs> I kind of just thought that was look back through. Yeah. You. Poles are best used in pairs if they can be, so we would have to go on a one on one basis and, tr and see how it looks before sure. you do that. Young biathletes that they're training with poles for in the their, um, in the off season. So some people are if they're not feeling confident, they're not feeling steady on their feet, they're not feeling very fit, they don't feel like move for walking. But lots of people who were like who can barely walk any distance, so they they're just almost scared to start because they are have been out of exercise for so long. Poles are a great way. Get outside. It's social. You can go with your friends. You don't even have to go out. There's benefits just to getting outside for five or ten minutes. Start slow. There's lots of programs. You don't have to think that just because you're going out and you're going for a walk that it has to be a long walk. It's all about just getting started one step at a time. Um, the walking poles, they, they are fitness equipment, but they are also considered mobility aids. And I don't, um, I wouldn't guarantee it, but I do know that some insurance companies, you can get reimbursed for the price of the poles because they are, are considered mobility aids in some cases. So if you had a note from a physio or a doctor, and I think you can sometimes, depending on your insurance company, you can get reimbursed for that. And um, Nordic skiers, they're the fittest of the fit. That's one of the most high demanding sports there is, so you can imagine how good walking is for you if you're using your poles. Yeah. Now, are these any different than what you would get at uh, a health store? Um, the poles, do they have uh, anything special? If you're buying walking, the like Nordic walking poles, these ones are very similar. They might even have these ones in your local store, they're in different supply stores. These ones have a few some, most of the walking poles you see have um, 
have little gloves or, or straps that you put your hands into. These poles do not have straps. Um, I said they're designed by an occupational therapist. She didn't like the straps because if you do fall on them, um, you can really hurt your hand and your thumb, which is common in skiers. So if you fall on a pole, if you stumble or fall, these ones you can just let go and you're not going to fall on them and you might not even fall at all because you're not attached to anything that you're, you have in front of you. So these ones have an ergonomic handle. There's a shelf on them, so instead of having your hand in a, a glove, you, you push down on the, on the handles. You don't have to hold on tightly. They, uh, I think most walking poles will be height adjustable, so these ones are height adjustable. They have some um, a dampening effect, so they don't, they're not too jarring. There's a lot of different poles out there. Some are really cheap and some are really expensive. I think these ones typically fall in the mid range. They are $100, but they're really good quality. And I had a lady out with me the other day and she had some walking poles and a glove and she said she paid $188 for them. And, um, and they weren't really any, there was nothing special about them. Um, the cheap ones I say though, they, I think you get what you pay for generally, as with anything, if you, they, they might not last as long. As you showed me earlier, they have a boot on them. Yes. And you can take that boot off and it has a spike yeah, in case so you're walking on ice. We use the boots on concrete or floors if you're walking indoors. Some people use them, you know, in the gym or at the mall. Or, and then if you're walking on sand or gravel or, um, be very ice. careful on ice, but if you are on ice, then um, you can take this off. I was snowshoeing, I take them snowshoeing and I just take the boots off and I've got snow baskets and away you go. And I think they also have the left or the right. Yes, these okay. ones do. So they're designed for each hand. Or as small as don't. They're just I think they're the same. Yeah. Way. So they're well thought out. But um, these ones, it, these ones, we have a couple of different kinds. These ones don't collapse down as small as some ones. Some do. So if you're thinking of taking them on vacation or you want to fit them in a suitcase. We have some that go a lot smaller. So some of the brands that you might see will go smaller, especially if they're for hiking. Those ones go down smaller. But if you're using them just in the city and you're not planning on packing them anywhere, then that is what's what's important to you. What did they have uh, on your bottom there, that round thing? What do you call that? On the, on the one that you showed us, the short one. Basket. Oh, the snow baskets, basket. yeah. So I'm going to take these off soon because the snow is melting, I think, finally. But I had these snow baskets on so that they, when I'm snowshoeing or using them in the snow, they don't just sort of go right all the way down to the bottom and they sit on top. Looks more like the cross-country. Yeah, yeah, like a ski pole almost there. And I've got my boots off of this one because I was using it in the snow, so we didn't need the boots. Excuse me, I had a, a friend who bought a pair um, of poles because I had talked to her about how good they were. And she said, well, I just picked some up, at whatever she did. I said, uh, how much did you pay for it? Oh, not much at all. I was like, I'm not going to go. Second time she was out, she caught in a sidewalk separation. Oh. The thing bent in three. Yeah, oh, so that's. I said, well, you see, um, she said, because she, she and I were going to go out do it together. I said, Mm, see, I, I wouldn't have advised you to try this. Yeah. Said, okay, gets, lesson, lesson learned. You get know. strong ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these ones were designed by another thing I like about them is a Canadian company. So if you are trying to support local, they are Canadian. But um, I'll let you try them and, and you see how you, how you like them. I like these ones. I like because I don't have to put my hand in a glove. I like that I don't have to grip them hard. I just I can use them hiking. I can, I can use them walking. I can use them snowshoeing. They're multi-purpose. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have a a suggestion or recommendation for the length of, of the poles that each person should should have? Yeah. Like at what length should you be using them? Yeah. So if you're using them out front, like for more for balance or traction or if you're going up and down hills, the um, guideline is to have them 
out front and your elbows should be at 90 degrees. <coughs> but all these poles also have measurements on the side with height, so it's in centimeters and inches. So I have them all set just to 5 2, but we can adjust them if need be for the demo. But um, the general rule is 90 degrees at the elbow. Is that 90 degrees from, from the middle of your hand or top of your hand or bottom um, of your hand? Just my elbow here. I just want that to be about 90 degrees. But so these ones are a bit high. These ones are set for me to be walking behind me as a fitness walker because I've got them set to five two. But if I was going to walk with them um, out front, I would have to lower them so that they were more at ninety degrees, and then I could balance. Them. And that the other one was for fitness, and this is uh, balance. Yeah. So I'll explain that a little bit. Um, so I'll just pause that for a moment. The, so we have a brand that we call the activator poles. These ones have a round bell tip on the bottom. These are the ones that, that you would hold out in front of you. They are a little bit different than the fitness poles. They've got um, a button pop here, which is a little, although these are very sturdy and you lock them and they're not moving, this is just adds a little bit extra security because you've actually got the, the little metal button that's holding it together. They can support up to like 200 pounds of pressure on this, so if you are really like pushing on them, they, you can push down quite hard and you're not going to have to worry about these poles. They've got the bell tips for stability and these ones, um, are held out up front 90 degrees. These other poles are more what we call our fitness line for fitness pulling. If you they go behind you, it's more like the cross country skiing. It'll be a faster pace and it's more for exercise and fitness than for stability or rehab. Um, I think I would recommend the activator poles if you had any kind of condition that would affect your balance. Um, you need to wait there for anything. If you need to wait there, then you would hold them out front. If you're post-surgery or if you're just less active, then the ones out front is the way to go. Okay. I don't know if I'm walking right with them, but... <laughs> so left foot, right arm, right arm. I feel like you're walking. There you go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> muscles in our ankles and everything, and we're losing the feeling down there in our feet. So one of the reasons our balance is so bad is because our brains can't feel what's going on with our feet. And when you add that third point of contact, um, it gives your brain uh, basically a triangle to, to coordinate where you are in space and stuff like that. And you can use the pole to also be engaged for... Exactly. So the pole, the pole, and having two poles is even better because it gives you that. I know for myself, I, I see my dad, or I used to see my dad. Now he's always with his walker. But myself, if I'm walking, it's like a reflex now for me to touch a wall or something as I'm walking or yeah. a railing because my brain wants that third uh, point of contact. Yeah. And so having things like a pole or a cane or whatever yeah. gives you that. Um, so the the poles held it out like that, that would give you that yeah. so, so does that make it worse for uh, when you're walking without them? Like you're more likely to them. You're more likely to them. Are you going to be a little bit uh, more Depends. stable when you're not using them than you were before? I don't know, that's a good question. Well, you were one of those. You're the one who brought it up when you say that. Yeah. Well, I certainly am at much bigger risk of falling when I don't have that third point of contact. Whether it makes me more unstable if that's not available? I, I think Maybe. You, you gain better posture and it probably helps you when you don't have it for short wherever you are. Oh, fair but enough. the other important yeah. 
the other important thing I, is the motion that you you kind of learn uh, what to put in front as you're starting to do them. And well, that gives you the proper gain. And like Jen said, I don't know if you guys remember this, but uh, one of the yoga instructors we had here was really talking about your core and balance. And like Jen said, if it's helping you build your core as opposed to being over slumped over, that's going to help you with your balance in the long term as well. Another exercise. Yeah. Uh, you're my demo person. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Or, um, okay. So urban polling is four. Fitness and fun. Diabetes prevention and management. Weight management. Cardiac health. Cancer rehab and prehab. Parkinson's arthritis. Hip knee surgery. Um, and that spinal stenosis, multiple sclerosis. It's um, anyone. It's for everybody. This, it's such a great form of exercise. I can't say enough good things. And I love that it just gives. I think I don't know. It gives me a boost. I love taking the polls out. I feel better for it. I feel like I've really improved my well-being when I'm out with the poles. Only because you start, I feel like my posture is better, I'm breathing better, I'm walking with a real gait with more, I'm not, um, I'm not uh, sort of slouching, I'm not stumbling, I'm, I just feel like I'm more aware of what I'm doing. And I think overall it's just a better way to get outside. So this is just a quick slide about the different straps. You can see there's a picture of like they call it spear thumb, someone's falling on their pole. This is why they've got the strapless versus the straps. Um, we've gone through a lot here. You can see the little um, there's a little bubble um, buttons, the round bells for support. There's the those tips they are say they're carbide, so they're really quite high quality tips. They're not going to wear down anytime soon. I don't use those tips an awful lot because they're either in the snow or sand. Most of the time I have my rubber boots on, but they're tough. And if the rubber boots do wear out, we can get replacements for those. The rubber boots, you don't have them on all the time, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I don't have them on if I'm in sand or gravel. Um, or, or snow. Or snow. Sometimes it, you'll be out on a path and it's and I find the boots are slipping because there's little rocks or pebbles. Oh. So then I take the boots off and then I can use the tips and then they tend to grab the ground. Are the boots interchangeable between the types of holes? Yes. So if you like the color or you like, you don't want to have the buttons, you want to have the twisting mechanism, we can buy I think the boots or the boots are about nineteen dollars, nineteen ninety nine, twenty dollars. So you can take these boots off and put them on those poles, or you can take those boots off and put them on these poles. And then, and then you can use them either way, however you want. Do you use them much indoors? <coughs> I don't use mine indoors very much, but I was. I live quite close to West Side Rec Center. And they have a really beautiful indoor walking and running track. And so I was thinking about maybe approaching them next, like in the fall, and seeing if they might like to get a class going inside through the winter. Because um, it might have to be early morning or later when it's not too busy, because you take up a bit more space when you've got all your poles. And I've heard of shopping, of our instructors having sessions in shopping centers too, like Chinook before it opens. They might. Yeah, yeah. So center, you see pole walkers all the time. Yeah. So I haven't done that myself. Um, when I had, I perforated my ear drum last year and I had that vertigo for three weeks, I couldn't get from the couch to the bathroom without poles. Like I, I used them in the house that whole time. Yeah. So is anybody in the room able to, to say anything about how much further they can walk with them as opposed to without them? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I, I go on holidays and I, I can I can walk pretty far still, but I can't walk all day like 
you would want to on a holiday and keep up with my husband. So I take polls with me when we go on holidays. I find that I can walk much faster. Faster and further. Yes. I, I might, I don't, I, I can't speak to that, but I do know I've got, my father-in-law has a pair, not this kind, but he has um, some walking poles, and I make him take them out, <laughs> and he walks farther when he's got his poles, and he walks better because he's had knee replacements, and I always get mad at him for, like, limping and leaning over, and when he's got his poles, he walks so beautifully, and we, and maybe even faster a little bit, but just he has a regular pace. It definitely takes a lot of the pressure off your knees. Yes. So uh, you don't get as tired. Yeah. Right? Pressure off your knees, your hips. Yeah. yeah. I used to walk in um, the weekend 10 breast cancer, 60K walks. And I've had um, knee braces on because I have arthritis in my knees. And the first year I, I took them. And silly enough, I didn't use them the first day. And I was in agony. I used them the second day, which is actually further. And no problem. I just walked fine. So then I continued using them the next walks that I did. Yeah. Can um, you explain again about the straps? What, what is that? Yeah, sure. So a lot of walking poles have a strap that goes around your hand. It usually goes around your hand, kind of like that. So rather than having a handle like this that kind of catches, instead of pushing down on this ledge, you push down on your like glove. It's almost like a glove. But if you were to fall and you landed on your pole, you could really break your thumb. You could really hurt your thumb or your hand. And your wrist. And your wrist. And you could, if you were tripping, if you, if you, sometimes I will even will trip on, like, I don't know, sometimes you get tied up or your pole gets caught on something. And if you're attached to it, you're just more likely to be shocked a little it. bit. And when you get shocked, sometimes you just, you just <coughs> swap. off. But with these poles, if something happens, then you can, you're just like, it just falls out of your hand and you can regain your posture and you're fine. So, and if you were to fall, you wouldn't fall on it because it wouldn't be attached to you. And if it were to get caught in something, it's not going to drag you down because you're not attached, so you can just let it go. Yep. I walk with some other women, and they walk faster than I do. One, she doesn't take her poles in the mall, because that's all we've been doing. But when we go on a path, she takes them in the room, and I accommodate, and I had a fall a year ago because I'm on the edge of the pavement, mm -hmm. that lip there. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, how do you deal with two people walking together and we go past? Yeah. Well, I guess it depends. I was out on um, the Glenmore Reservoir, on the path around the reservoir with someone the other day, and when we were side by side, we were taking up the whole path. So if someone else came over, we would just, I would just hop in behind her and then pop back out in front if we were in. Um, and nobody... So do you get more, does it help you to know where the edge is? Uh, I think if you had any type of vision or proprioceptive type difficulties you would because you would be able to feel it. I don't use mine out in front very often and I don't use it as like as a as a way to feel what's going on around me. But if I was walking and um, and not really paying attention, I would know if I hit the side of the path for sure because your pole would slip or you could feel that it wasn't on the pavement. You could feel that it was on the on the gravel or it doesn't catch the same way. It was yeah, I would know. So my friend and I we used to walk just maybe a half step one in front of the other. Yeah. So you weren't walking side by side, shoulder to shoulder, but you were, you know, we could talk easily, but she was just that little bit behind me or ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And it makes all the difference. Don't try to walk shoulder to shoulder. Yeah, it's a bit of a narrow path. Yeah, you would go off the side. Because <laughs> Calgary is known for its narrow sidewalks. Mm -hmm. You can't um, walk side by side at it. I just thought of me and it's gone. Um, I guess while I'm thinking about Tom was showing you, I, I know that there's a slide of this, but if you were to get into a class or really get into it with your poles, there are a lot of other exercises you can do with your poles if you wanted to. Like I use them often like as a stability for you know, squats or lunges. You can um, you know, use them up high and use them to help when you're stretching. I put them up front for balance and you know, when I'm warming up, I, there's all sorts of things you can do. And, um, it's a nice way to also be balanced. Like if you're not comfortable doing a squat or a lunge, sometimes just that extra base of support, it's like holding onto something, but you're, you can do it in the park or 
wherever you are. So I often will take my poles out and there's all kinds of um, different stretches and exercises that you can do when you lift your poles as well. So you can use them for that. This is the do you have a list of them, like the exercises? Um, I can send them to you. Yeah, I might have a picture of them here today. Yeah. Uh, this is just the activator technique. We'll go through this when we're practicing. But elbows at 90 degrees, and it's just a natural way. Your arms automatically swing, you know, opposite foot, opposite arm. It just sometimes feels weird when you have poles. But we'll practice. This is the activator versus fitness technique. So you can see the girl in the yellow jacket. She's got her poles behind her. She's using them to propel her. She's going probably a lot faster. She's um, using that for exercise. I think everyone in Calgary knows this, but if you're outside walking and it's icy or snowy, it's always good to have grips on your shoes. 